this action will be regarded as something very, very rude to the katana, and you might get in trouble doing it. Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. The katana, or Japanese samurai sword, has a history of over 1,000 years. And it was an item dedicated to God, or called the samurai's soul. This is why, even today, they are handled with much care and respect. If you want to buy a katana in Japan someday, or start training in katana-related martial arts like Yaido, there are some rules that might be good for you to know in advance. So today, as in Yaido trainee and katana otaku, I will introduce 5 taboos when handling katana. I have ordered the 5 taboos based on how serious they are, so I hope you can watch till the end to understand all of them. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. <laughs> one, goofing around with a katana. This first one might sound very obvious, but it's still something that Yado trainees are always cautioned about, so I thought I should introduce it. You too might be watching this video now and thinking, who would goof around with a blade in their hands? However, if you actually have a chance to hold a katana, your inner five-year-old will start to say, Hey, let's try Zoro's Iyai Shishison-san pose. I want to do Tanjiro's Uchishio. I used to work at a cultural experience facility called Kyoto Samurai Experience, where guests can enjoy a 90-minute experience of swinging a real sword and trying Zen meditation. 90% of the guests were very nervous when they held the sword, and they handled them with the utmost care, because I have cautioned them about how dangerous it could be. But there were some people screaming, Ketsuga Tensho or Kaze no Kizu, as they swung the real sword against the mats. And it was not funny nor safe. I believe that any Iaido instructor would be very angry and disappointed with you if you take out your sword and even just act to try to attack other trainees as a joke. This is because the ultimate goal of Iaido is to be mentally and physically strong enough so you don't have to rely on violence to communicate. There's a saying in Iaido that goes, the true battle should be done within the sheath, meaning that you should do your best not to draw your sword. It may sound like a contradiction, but the true purpose of almost all Japanese martial art budo is to achieve peace and to learn how to properly control your body and mind. In the world of Yado, you always need to have a sense of tension that when you pull out your sword, there's a slight possibility that someone's life may be lost. I'm sorry, Sensei. It was a joke. I was just goofing around. Isn't going to be an excuse. <sighs> Two, using the katana as a cane. Right after you start your training in katana martial arts, you might be nervous and try to handle your katana carefully. However, once you start getting used to it after a while, I sometimes see people using their swords like canes when they try to stand up from a chair or when they are standing and listening to someone talking. As I have said many times before, a katana is not just a tool, it is closer to a sacred object. Through the respectful handling of the sword, the practitioner of Yado is taught discipline and respect. Please always keep in mind that the katana is something higher than you, and you should never use it as a cane or something to help you do something. 
However, you might notice that this is a rule that was born quite recently for martial art training. If you take a look at pictures like this during the samurai eras, you can see that they quite often used katanas as canes. This is probably because in this era, there were actual battles with swords, and they were treated as something much more practical than they are today. But as a modern day katana trainee, I believe that the meaning of the katana and the purpose of swinging it should be different from the war eras. Today, we should focus more on training Yaido as a way to learn courtesy. Three, hitting each other's sheaths. When you put your sword on your waist through your belt, your sheath will be stretching out from your left side. If two people with katana on their waist try to walk past each other on their right side, what would happen? Yes, the sheaths of their swords would hit each other. I've explained in this video that every samurai were all forced to have their katana on their left waist, regardless of their dominant hand. But this is the reason why. If everyone randomly had their katana on their left or right waist, it would be very difficult to walk straight and avoid hitting each other's katana. This is why a rule was made that everyone must have their katana on their left waist and walk on the left side. It has always been the most humiliating act to have someone damage your katana, the samurai's soul. It is said that there were occasions that led to two samurai fighting each other when their sheaths collided. Even today, it is considered a taboo for two scabbards to hit each other as a matter of etiquette. And in fact, since sheaths are made from wood, they can be damaged if they bump into something violently. If you ever start training in Yaido, where there are other students training with you, or even when you go to a katana shop, to buy a katana, please always be careful about the sheath. If you ever walk inside your dojo with the sword, keep it on your left. Walk on the left side and avoid it from bumping into others' swords. <laughs> Stepping over a katana. If you haven't trained in katana martial arts before, you might think, when would you ever keep a blade on the floor and walk over it? However, once you start training in Yaido, you will realize that there are actually quite a lot of occasions where you put the katana on the floor. For example, when you are changing into your training gear, in between your training, or when you are doing your bowing. At these occasions, when you have your sword on the floor and someone like your instructor were to call you, there's a chance that you might accidentally step over it. This action would be regarded as something very, very rude to the katana, and you might get in trouble doing it. Please imagine it's almost like walking over someone's face who's napping on the floor. You wouldn't do it unless you're doing it on purpose, right? Five, randomly handing a katana. I brought this one to the end because it is the one that even people who aren't training katana martial arts need to know about too. If for example, you go to a katana shop and hold a sword in your hands, when you hand the katana back to the shop staff, you must be very careful. Let me demonstrate the proper way for you. Just like when you hand a kitchen knife or scissors to someone, these are basic manners you must know in order to handle your katana. 
In other words, if you ever go to a katana shop and do this properly, I believe that the people there will be very happy for your care and respect. Then lastly, today's conclusion. I explained about five taboos of handling a katana. One, goofing around with a katana. It's very dangerous and it's no joke. Also, as a martial art, it's an act that goes against the purpose of developing a strong body and mind that doesn't rely on violence. Two, using the katana as a cane. A sword is not just a tool. It is a sacred object and must be handled with care. Three, hitting each other's sheets. It is not only a humiliating act for the swordsman, but also an act that damages the scabbard. Four, stepping over a katana. Think of the act of stepping over a sword as being the same as stepping over someone's face. Five, randomly handing a sword. Be sure to follow the correct procedure to pass the sword safely. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you to deepen your understanding towards katana culture, please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And my goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help is what I need. And please check out our sub channel and membership through the link inside the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Domo, arigatouzaimashita. I've never done one goofing around with the sword or number two using it as a cane and also number five, you know, the improper way of handing the katana before in my life. But number three and four as a yaido trainee, I've definitely done it before, yes. Especially if you go to, for example, like on tournaments or trainings with um, big groups of people, you have to be really careful because there's a lot of people within the dojo. And when you just you know, randomly walk inside the dojo or something, you really do often you know, hit each other's sheets, especially like at the opening ceremonies, everyone gets in the line. And then after, you know, the ceremony is over, everyone starts randomly walking over everywhere, I guess. And then you tend to, yeah, hit each other's sheets. And I did once uh, accidentally walk over a katana before. And at that time, um, I had, I was actually working in the tourism industry and working with a katana shop. Yes. And I accidentally stepped over one of the katana when the shop owner called me. And I was very, very um strictly scolded at that time so personally it's i have a really strong memory towards making yeah making this taboo